Hi everybody, this is Dr. Dan. I'm back with our uh, design of our instrumentation amp tester. I left you off last time where we had um, done the schematic for the uh, voltage follower to power this, and now I've already added the uh, instrumentation amp part of the circuit here. And so what happens is, is we provide voltage. I use a voltage divider here, and so it will be about 0.4 volts going in because it's one tenth of the uh, total voltage going into the instrumentation amp. And that's not, 0.4 volts is not enough to light this uh, LED. So if the instrumentation amp uh, correctly amplifies that, it will light the LED. And that's how we know the instrumentation amp is working. Okay, but now we have the schematic done. And you also notice on here that I could use the V plus and V minus symbols along with the ground symbol wherever there was ground. And that way I don't have to like make all those connections together. Just by putting those symbols in there, like for instance, it knows that this, uh, v plus is the same place as this V plus, but I can just use those circuit symbols. So you don't have to like draw the lines to keep them all. And it helps us keep our schematic a little looking better. And so now I want to do the PCB. So I'm going to go over here and click and switch to PCB document. And so that will bring uh, our PCB document up. And so Whenever you're making any changes from this point forward to the schematic or PCB, you have to make sure that they are both open at the same time. So up at the top here, I have the schematic. I have the design, which will have both the schematic and PCB, and I have the uh, PCB uh, up. So if I make any changes here, unless I have the schematic open, it won't make the changes on the schematic. And then um, your thing will get mad that you're out of sync and it takes a it's a, a real pain to get things back in sync So just make sure if you're making changes just keep them all open up top here And so what happens is we have all our components off to the side and we need to put them on the PCB And we can put them wherever we want. We can orient them however we want and so that's what I'm gonna do so I'm gonna go down here and drag Our instrumentation amp LED our power voltage follower op amp and then we just have lots of resistors and one of the problems that you'll see is all these resistors are just labeled you know R2 R4 R6 there's an R1 R2 R3 R5 all the resistors are here and we don't really necessarily know what those are uh, and so one of the things we're going to make sure we do is label everything so that when you actually try uh, to make this and solder it, it will be printed on the PCB. And so you'll know where to put the um, components you want to put. So you, when we lay out our PCB, we can lay it out however we want. Um, you don't really necessarily have to worry about these wires. If your PCB was really complicated, um, you might be more careful about where things are. Our PCB is not that complicated, so we're going to be okay. Uh, but I am going to try to like save some space so that my thing is not very big. I am going to put the LED close to the instrumentation amp. Um, I'm going to go ahead and I guess I'll, I'll, I'll put the op amp kind of in this area. Put like a row of resistors, I guess, down here. I'm not gonna spend too much time on this um, other than just to make sure I get everything in semi-compact form. Okay, so let's say that's the layout we want. Uh, and what we're gonna do is then drag the edges of our PCB so we can make the shape of the board more reasonable and it fits. It doesn't let me grab it. All right, there we go. And there are other ways you can do this. You can even um, go into the Fusion 360, draw a sketch and set up how big you want the board. And so that's one thing you could do. But in our case, we can just um, we can just do this simple uh, 
dr drag the things down to make the PCB the size we want. So right there is a PCB. So the first thing we now have to do, these white lines here, if we click on them, okay, and we go over here and you say, you see in the layer, it's 19 unrouted, but it's basically showing us where the connections are, but it's not routed on the PCB itself. So we actually want a circuit trace on the PCB. So in order to do that, we have to do the route. And so we could do it manually. Frankly, we can do the auto router is our best option. We're just gonna use both top and bottom. Um, and this will basically try to optimize or try to give us some ideas of what routing would look like. Um, you can have the computer apply low, medium, or high effort. I don't think it really matters. Uh, I'll just put on high effort and I will uh, say continue. Okay, and so it's going to try a bunch of different routes. And so we can hit start. And so right, each of these is a different route and you can see the different routes here uh, laid out. Red is on, means it's on the top of the board and uh, blue means it's on the bottom of the board. There may be a good reason to choose one versus the other. And so that may be something you're interested in looking at. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and choose the the top one and I'll I'll hit end job. Right? And so now we're act, it's actually routed. Okay? Now so now we have designed our uh, PCB with the routing with the like these will be copper traces. So that's where I'm going to leave off for this video. In the next video, we'll show how to kind of make sure it's working, kind of clean it up and then get ready for manufacturing.